Hello, everyone. My name is Elisa Ewitt, and I'm the Assistant Director of Alumni Relations at Teachers College. And I would like to thank everyone for joining us today for our Alumni Career Development Webinar Series featuring alumna Bonnie Taylor Davis. The webinar series covers a range of career topics and includes the speakers from a variety of backgrounds. The series is co-sponsored by the TC Office of Career Education and Professional Development, as well as the Office of Alumni Relations. Videos of past webinars are available on our website at www.tc.edu slash alumni slash career webinars. Although many of us are staying at home right now, we are so grateful for, to our alumni experts who have stepped forward to offer digital programs that will continue to bring the TC community together to learn, share, and connect with one another. Today, Bonnie presents Leading High Performing Virtual Teams. Bonnie Davis is the founder of Hue Work, a firm that was created to inspire humans at work. She is a consultant, facilitator, speaker, and executive coach who follows her passion for learning and growth by designing and delivering programs that develop leaders, help people through times of change, improve performance, enhance culture, help teams work better together, and generally make work a more meaningful experience. For almost 25 years, Bonnie has built her expertise in human resources roles at Avea, Sun Microsystems, and Level 3 Communications as well as consulting roles at Aon Consulting, Deloitte, and Touche. She has also taught Strategic Human Resources Management Master's Degree Program at the University of Denver and has published articles for Forbes Online. Bonnie has a Master's Degree in Organizational Psychology from TC and a Bachelor's Degree in Psychology and Business Administration from American University. She is a certified coach with Coaches Training Institute, Lominger Corn Ferry, Standout 2.0, the Marcus Buckingham Company, and has a certification from the Facilitator Studio. Bonnie has provided a workbook, which you can download in the handouts pane located on the right of the screen. If you have any audio or technical issues, please chat me directly in the chat box. And without further ado, here's Bonnie. Hi everyone, I am so thrilled to be here. For me, this is a little bit of a very bizarre reunion of many walks of life. So I know that I have people out there that I went to teacher's college with a long time ago. It was back in the 90s. So I know that, for example, my friend Andy said he's joining. I know that my Kate, who was my one of my very first friends at my first job also at that time in my life in New York City is also on. I know that newer people in my life in Denver, like Lauren said she was joining and of course, lots of new people. So for those of you that I don't know, my LinkedIn address is here on the screen. I'd love for you to send me a quick note, reach in for me, meeting new people and networking is always a wonderful bonus of doing se sessions like this one. And um, I am, for me, again, a reunion to be back with Teachers College and also to share some of the information that's so near and dear to my heart because I have been working with on virtual teams, leading virtual teams, coaching other people on their virtual teams for over 20 years now. So for us, a lot of us, this is new in the world of COVID. For some people, it's actually not so new, yet it might feel really different. So I want to encourage you to come with a learner's hat on today. Even if you've been managing virtual teams for many years, it could be that it just feels really different for you doing it in this more different environment than what you've had in the past. Well, you already heard a wonderful introduction of me, so I won't give you too much of the details. I wanted to tell you a little bit about how I came upon this journey, because I'm sure that there are some of you out there who are newer, who are maybe still at Teachers College, still getting your degree, or newer in your career. So for me, it's always interesting to hear about somebody's journey. And so for me, I started out, I grew up in Queens, New York, so not too far from Teachers College. And I had this image, for any of you that remember the TV show, who, Who's the Boss? There was a main character on Who's the Boss in the 80s, Angela Bauer. And Angela was this high-powered career woman. She wore a suit, and I believe she commuted into either Manhattan or some other big city. And she was my hero. I didn't have women in my life that looked like that and went to jobs with their suits into big office buildings. And so my image was I wanted to be Angela. I had no idea what I wanted to do but I knew that I wanted to be Angela. And so my undergrad degree, I started out in business, 
but again, didn't know what that would look like. Obviously, you can't just show up to a big office building without knowing what you're going to do. And then I came upon some psychology classes, and I thought, I love this business, these business classes, these psychology classes. I finally put a call in, because this was before the internet, put a call into the American Psychological Association to say, do you have a booklet about jobs in psychology? And sure enough, I read about industrial organizational psychology, did a little research on places to get an advanced degree since I knew nothing about this field that sounded really interesting. And voila, I came to the org psych program at Teachers College. And for me, that program was really so life-changing. In addition to learning really great content, having amazing instructors, I started building my network for life. So people that are still important to me. And as a matter of fact, on a personal note, if it wasn't for being at TC, I may not have met my husband because my first friend in orientation at TC was Jeremy. And Jeremy is still very close to my husband and I. He went to college with my husband, Seth, and that is how I met Seth. So there you have it. So not only did I get a great career and lots of learning, but met my husband out of my, my TC degree. So uh, Hugh Work is about inspiring humans at work, which is a lot of what you'll hear today. That's the name of my company. I have two business partners, Lisa and Bijal. And Bijal actually is also a TC graduate from the same program, about in the same era in the 90s. However, we actually didn't know each other. So I moved to Denver in the year 2000. That's when I switched to internal human resources roles in big companies before starting my own business in 2012, and then in the past five years or so, I met Bijal and we started our own business. So another way that this has become part of my full circle of my teacher's college experience. So um, I want to also mention that I, I, why you heard more about me and my background. Why am I even qualified to be here to teach this content to you on managing virtual teams? For me, starting really in 2000 at Sun Microsystems, we were one of the first companies that did what we called hoteling at the time. So we were working from different places. And um, ever since then, I've really almost always been part of some sort of a global virtual team where people were working in different locations. In more recent years, I've worked, I've led and I've worked with a number of big global dispersed project teams that were not in the same location. Having my own business in the past eight years, I have been mostly working from home, although I Swap my time between working from home and I do have office space outside of my home. And my coaching clients, um, I am an executive coach, and with my coaching clients, many, if not most of them, have some element of working from home or working on dispersed teams. And um, I spend a lot of my day coaching people. I also do workshops when I teach, I teach virtual workshops and I also help people learn how to better communicate virtually. So I personally, love doing it. It's really been a life changer for me. I have two children. They are 11 and 15. So it's really been a life changer for me to be able to better connect, balance my personal life and my professional life, but also get a lot of done, a lot done at home. But it's not for everyone. And so a lot of what we're going to talk about today is really making it work for you, not making it one-stop shop, not assuming that everything is the same at home, but really digging deep and making sure that you're really understanding what are you good at that you want to keep doing and what is difficult for you. So our objectives today are going to be first to understand what do we even mean by a high performing virtual team? And then what does it take to be a strong manager or leader of a high performing virtual team? I use the terms manager and leader pretty interchangeably. Generally speaking, managers manage people, but most managers that I know also have leadership needs in their role. And quite honestly, I don't even think you need to have people that report to you to be a leader. So I might interchange those words, but essentially I mean the same thing. Whether you have people that report to you and you are their boss, or it might just be on a project team where on a more temporary basis you need to accomplish something and get something done together. We're going to be very hands-on and action-oriented today. So I know I'm starting out, I'm talking a lot, but I promise in a moment I will give you a chance to participate. Uh, there is a a workbook in here and so you can get that in the handout section of GoToWebinar and in that workbook you can of course take notes in the very back of that is going to be a self-assessment. It's a pretty lightweight quick and dirty self-assessment but I will encourage you to either print that now if you're able to print it or to toggle your screen so you have it open electronically 
or just have a paper and pen handy because you can just jot some notes down. So this is really about um, jumping in, self-assessing, self-reflecting. I'm a very action-oriented person, so I want to make sure that you are walking away with something that you can hold in your hand, something that you will do differently. I haven't done my job today. If you don't feel like you have at least one thing that you've identified that you're going to do differently as a result of joining us today for this hour. Okay, so with that in mind, I do want to encourage everybody to do whatever you can to be fully focused, fully present, and here in the moment. So as virtual managers, this is probably one of your biggest challenges is your people may not be focused when they are on team meetings or even when they're in one-on-ones with you. So if you can imagine that when you are leading your team meetings, you really want your team to be fully engaged and immersed, to turn off their phone, to turn off their notifications, even go grab a drink, whatever you need to do to feel fully immersed here and present in the moment, I encourage you to do that. And the other thing I encourage you to do that I am going to do now, because I've been sitting on my chair here for a little while, so take a stretch and figure out getting your energy moving, getting your blood moving. We're going to do another stretch break a little bit later into this before we get into the home stretch, but it's a really important part of being a virtual manager is being able to get the blood moving and not sit for too long. Okay, so that's a little bit about what we're going to be doing today, getting your materials handy. I also want to mention that there are, we, we call this virtual teams. And some people say, well, what are remote teams? And what about dispersed teams? And the term telework is a little bit dated at this point, but referred more to when we were dialing in. If those of you who remember the, the awful beeping sound is your, you heard your computer slowly dial in to your company. Thankfully, those days are over. Our technology is great. It's not perfect, but it's great. I just want to mention that I use these terms pretty interchangeably. If you look up the differences, sometimes there are differences. But my purpose in, in this session today is to talk about people who need to accomplish something collectively, however, they're not doing it in the same location. So right now with COVID, most of us are doing that from our homes. We're gonna be moving into a new world and it's not really a new normal, it's what I call the next normal. And for the, the next normal for many of us is going to look like some people are gonna be at home, some people are gonna start going into the office, then more people are gonna start going into the office. Some of you may never go back into the office and some of you may love that and some of you may be itching to get back into the office. Any of these terms refer to people who are not all in the same place in any variety. And sometimes it's across, it's global, it's across time zones. Um, but the point is whatever combination of work that doesn't happen face to face in the same office all the time is what we're referring to around virtual and remote teams. Okay, so we had a little bit of a glitch. I mentioned a moment ago that technology doesn't always work and the technology gods were not really in my favor today. So we had this wonderful tool called Poll Everywhere. For those of you who have used it, it's a wonderful interactive tool. And unfortunately, it stopped working right before we got together today. So we're gonna be creative here and we're still going to find opportunities for you to be interactive. I do encourage you to take that pen and paper and jot notes down for yourself so that you have something to take away after you're done with this. But we're also going to more creatively use the chat feature here in order to connect. So on this screen, you'll see a green circle on the left side. And that has a picture of three people with three bars, kind of a Wi-Fi bar going over them. If you see that symbol, that is your indication to mean that, okay, time for me to roll up my sleeves and start chatting and getting involved in the conversation. So what we are going to do is start with our first question and ask all of you to participate. So first thing I wanna find out is what do you like the most about managing a virtual team? What are some things that are really fun, interesting, productive? What are the positive aspects of managing a virtual team? So I think we're gonna, yeah, we're in the chat. So those of you who have your GoToWebinar up, 
start looking at your chat section and start chatting. And again, this is a little clunkier than I was hoping because we don't have the, the, all the answers popping up the way we were hoping on Poll Everywhere. So Bonnie, we're getting some um, answers so I can read them out for you. So flexibility of time management, different cultures, customs, and perspectives from all over the world. Screen sharing, working on documents together is great. It's super convenient and easy. Um, being in different time zones, so we have someone who's on the East Coast, but his entire team is in Arizona. So it's been using these video tools has been a really great opportunity to be present with his team. Um, a lot of them are about location. Uh, let's see. The work-life harmony. Uh, meeting in shorts and t-shirts. Uh, some people said that their meetings are actually more focused. Uh, and that this has been allowed them to have more collaboration, introductions to new ideas. Someone said that this has definitely made sure to let them be home for dinner. Um, we've heard uh, learning new work styles, um, increased family time, mm -hmm. and being able to manage their time better. Awesome. Boy, I'm writing those down and I'm saying, yep, 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 I agree, I agree, I agree wholeheartedly. I think for many of us, uh, you feel like, hmm, I got time back. I don't have to commute anymore. I don't have to put on nice clothes. Some of us are grooming habits. It feels a little bit easier. So it just feels like you get some of your time back and certainly that family time is really positive. So thank you for sharing all of that. Um, how about the opposite? What are some of the things that are super challenging that you don't so much like about managing a virtual team? The hard stuff. I'm always about let's get out the hard truths. Let's be open and honest because we can't solve the hard stuff if we're not going to name it. So let's name the hard stuff about working. And, and, and I know we're talking about working from home generally. Um, I want you to also think about the, this idea of managing a virtual team specifically. So a tough job you're you have responsibilities and you're not physically with the people who you're overseeing who are executing on those responsibilities so some of the answers we're getting is people are not ready to start on time the day never ends there are lots of disruption and what we're having right now technology doesn't always cooperate um, everyone is always tempted to multitask during meetings so they're actually not being focused and being with everyone Collaborations can be difficult and emails get lost and there's just a lot of that follow-up. It's hard to develop relationships without really being there. Mm -hmm. um, it's also harder to read the room and gauge reactions now, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're not turning on your video, just not having that visual feedback. Um, people may be engaged, but they're not really demonstrating that. Um, just having those intimate conversations post and pre-meetings to get the real vibe of what's going on. Yeah, um, the meeting, and the meeting, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, tracking the performance of team members. Mm -hmm. um, and now in COVID right now, just people are having to balance their home life and their work life and people have to are caring for their children, caring for their other family members. And so that's been very difficult for some people. Um, and then just having a lot of really late meetings or really early meetings. Great, so that boundaries are not so clear on your day, yeah. Uh, again, I'm nodding my head and I'm saying, yep, 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 I totally get it. Being that I've been in that mode for a few months with my kids at home, I'm super thankful that my kids are a little bit older at 11 and 15. My friends, family, and clients, and those of you out there who are doing it with little ones, say age six and under, wow, it is incredibly difficult. And I think what I'm what I'm experiencing and what I'm hearing from my coaching clients is the word exhaustion. 
this is so draining. There's a few reasons that we're feeling that way. It's what you're talking about with the kids coming in the room and, and some people it's roommates, some people it's older family members that they're worried about either their health or just getting them groceries and their basic needs met. There's also this research that you may have seen about this drain, this idea of looking at a computer screen, looking at people. This is not normal. This is not natural. When we're in a a conference room, we look around the room, we look at our notes, but here we feel the need to like have our eyeballs glued at this camera. And the proximity of my eyes to your eyes on a screen, it's not the human proximity. So um, there is a lot of research that says that, yes, this is exhausting in a different way. We're also not moving enough. So even just walking from one conference room to another is, believe it or not, you're, you're actually gaining some energy in that. It sounds funny to say it's more tiring to sit on your bed all day, but it really is. And so um, we'll talk about some of those things today in terms of overcoming what is difficult. And, you know, I think um, one of my favorite words that I learned in the past few years is the word friction, is removing the barriers to change, removing the barriers to making things easy. Uber is a great example. They removed all the friction of finding the name of a taxi company and, and paying the, the, and finding the money in your purse and taking out the credit card as you're running to a late flight and fiddling with receipts for expense reimbursements. One click, they know exactly, the taxi knows where you are and, you're, and it's paid and it's all done. So there is more friction now with getting things done. You're not just popping by somebody's desk. You're not just bumping into them at the water cooler. And so I think that's a lot of what we're experiencing as well. Um, what are, um, I'm, what's, what's not different at all when you're managing a virtual team? So we've talked about a lot of the things that are, are different, the exhaustion, the, pro the productivity, um, and again, the good and the bad of things that are different. The, hey, I get to see my family for dinner. So lots of things feel tremendously different. What's not all that different when you're managing a virtual team? So again, on the chat, what is not all that different when you're managing a virtual team? And I'll get us warmed up with some answers that I hear from my clients. Well, I still need to, we still have goals to get done. I still need to care about my employees. I still do one-on-ones. I still have to make the same kinds of decisions. Some cases, their demands are a lot higher right now. There, There's new goals put on them. There's new work. There's things like, um, things that, that their customers are experiencing, new challenges. But what isn't all that different when you're managing a virtual team? So some of the answers that we're getting is the need to connect with team members, the need to communicate effectively, um, just those expectations for deliverables and goals and deadlines, accountability, um, identifying next steps or tasks for the team, um, either either being in person or being virtual, those relationships are still really important. Um, aligning from top to bottom over the organization. Just availability is also a big one. Um, and then getting input from everyone, motivating others and giving feedback. Great, all great points. And, um... I, uh, the point of me asking that question is lots is different and we're going to keep talking about what is different, but hold on to the things that you know you do really well as a manager and as a leader. So part of my training is I am a strengths-based coach with the Marcus Buckingham company and the work I do is always to start with what are you good at and what do you know that your strengths are. So for my first piece of advice today, and I'm gonna keep giving tips and tools and advice throughout, but my first tip is to think about where do you really excel as a manager and a leader and maybe it's things that you just know you do really well maybe you have, you've had some 360 degree feedback maybe it's things that you've been told by your team verbally or by your boss so think about and i want you to write it down now what are the things that you know you do really well as a as a leader and it, it maybe you're a great listener or you're really committed you really care about your team um, you're, you're a quick decision maker. You, get, you don't get bogged down by making decisions. So think about it and we'll keep, it, we'll keep reassessing this and we have that self-assessment at the end to make it a little bit more formal. But think about the things that you do really well because you're gonna keep doing those really well and then we're gonna talk about the things that are harder and different that you're going to work on. 
Okay, well, thank you all for participating. So um, we're gonna go into one more discussion before we jump into the meat of the model of really what it takes to be a strong manager of a virtual team. So let's just get clear on a definition. How would you describe a high performing team? I never wanna make assumptions that we're all talking about the same thing. So if we're gonna spend the rest of our time today to figure out how to be great at it, let's, let's define the it. So again, how would you describe a high performing team? And again, use that chat feature to go ahead and share what do we even mean by a high performing virtual team? So the first answer I have, it's a team that knows how to produce results and does it in a sustainable way. Awesome. Um, again, like high productivity, um, high psychological safety, mm. communication is free flowing and prompt. Uh, the team is candid, they're there for each other and they're accountable. Um, high efficiency, they're able to deliver quantifiable impact. Um, effectively meeting the mission. The team has complementary skill sets and talents. There's a high degree of trust and synergy. Um, recognizing others. Um, a high variance to make them resilient to new challenges. Wow, I feel like I just did a Google search and I popped up every single thing I could have popped up. So um, I am thrilled with this group. I, those are all fabulous answers. And I, I think that really everything that's on that list is the same that you would have as a high performing team. So whether or not the word virtual is in there or not, and I, I'm putting I have some air parentheses around the word virtual, it's the same thing. I think the one difference is that it could be done from multiple locations. You no longer have the safety of, if I can see you, I know what you're doing. If I can see you, I can communicate with you directly. So it's doing all those things that everybody mentioned, but doing it with even higher levels of communication and trust than you do with anything else. I really think communication and trust are at the heart of what is primarily different. So. What I'm showing on the screen now is the very last page of the PDF workbook that is on the handouts version. Again, if you haven't pulled this down yet off of GoToWebinar, go to the handouts, handouts section within GoToWebinar and you'll see a PDF. This self-assessment is what I want you to have handy now. And in the event that you can't print it, that's totally fine, or you can't download it, um, just take a piece of paper and pen and write down something that looks like this. It doesn't really matter what it looks like. It could be back of a napkin, back of an envelope. The point is, as we go through the details now of what it takes to be a strong manager, I wanna make sure that you have a chance to take some notes and to work on assessing yourself. So, and this is, as you probably know, for your eyes only. No, we're not gonna collect these. We are going, we, we'll have a conversation just for people to share your highest and lowest areas, but just out of curiosity, not because we're judging, because we all have high areas and low areas. That's just human nature. So, um, again, as, as I talk on the next slide, think about where you're gonna give yourselves one, two, threes, fours, fives, one is your lowest, five are your highest, anything in between is good too. Use your own judgment on those ratings. And um, we're gonna go ahead and look at the, the details here. So this is really, um, those of you who said, you know, Bonnie, this chatting and engaging in conversation is, is interesting, but give me the stuff. I came for the good. So this is the stuff. So this is what I have created as the core capabilities of successful virtual managers. And so um, I'd like you to not get overwhelmed by the fact that there's 10 things on here, but really take them one at a time. And so here we go. I'm just gonna go on the slide from the left side down and then over to the right side down. Okay, so self-care is incredibly critical now more than ever. And this is really about the what we know to be the great life habits. So I would say that there's so many things with 
in life and also with working from home that you cannot control. There are things that you can control. So my first request on this is think about what are the things I can control and maybe even write that question at the top of your worksheet. What are the things that I can control? As a coach, this is a question that I bring to my clients over and over and over again because we tend to get hung up on what we can't control and that gets really overwhelming and that provides a lot of anxiety for us. So if you can ground yourself on what I can control, then this will help you tremendously. And so maybe you feel like I can't, well, get to the gym, the gyms are closed for the most part. I can't find an hour to work out. No, but maybe you can find five minutes to get up and stretch or to go for a walk or to do an, an, a meditation app. For me, I have to admit, my exercise habits are still not quite where I'd like them. However, I am really proud to say that I'm now on day 35 of every single morning meditating, and I was not doing that before COVID because I was running out to get my kids out the door and running out to early workshops to facilitate, and, and I have built this nice habit of I'm home and I have more time, so I'm meditating every day, and I'm really proud of it. So what's for you, those wish list self-care items? And I love this term, um, of micro habits. It could just be that five, the, the five minute walk around the block. It could just be the stretch. But this is so critical for becoming resilient and role modeling it for your team. Really, really, this is so critical. As managers, if you're showing that you're working yourselves into the ground and you're working through dinner and you're not taking breaks and you're sending out email at two o'clock in the morning, that's a loud message for your team to go, well, if my boss is doing that, I should probably do that. So keep in mind, this is not only for yourself and your health and your ability to be resilient, but it's for role modeling it for your team. You're also role modeling this for your children. So those of you who have children at home, they are taking note of what work looks like. Work looks a lot different than it used to. Mom and dad are not necessarily putting on their work clothes and leaving to go out the door. So they're paying attention and self-care is really important there too. This is where those boundaries are really critical. So having a set start and end to the day, not having your device attached to you 24-7, I know it's really hard, but set time limits. Say, you know what? Six o'clock, the device is going to sleep now. And if the device is sleeping for two hours, well, you have some downtime to, to eat a, a regular dinner and you pick it back up at eight or nine o'clock at night, that's okay. Do what you need to do, especially if you're balancing your kids during the day, but definitely set those boundaries of when you're taking breaks, when you're starting and ending your day. It's really, really critical. Okay, that's the one I might speak about for the longest because as you can probably tell, it is near and dear to my heart in trying to always improve my own self-care and in also noticing that with my coaching clients, it's something that is so, so critical that if we burn ourselves out, nothing else is going to go well for us. Culture. So how does it feel to be part of this team? Are people learning, growing? Are they engaged? I think what's most important is to tap into what do people love about working and find more of that, find more opportunities. If what somebody loved about work was bumping into their buddies at the office, they don't have that now. What really gets them? Is it helping customers? Is it solving big problems? If you don't know this about your team, ask them, what do you love about being at work? And if that question doesn't land, then ask them, what have you done in the past two years that has, have, has fired you up the most, given you the most energy? How can we find more opportunities for you to do that, even if it's virtual? So with culture, it's really critical that you're intentional about it, that you name it, that you don't take it for granted. And you probably have to renegotiate this in a virtual world. So this could be things like, boy, in a around a conference table, everybody participated in meetings. Our culture was full participation. Now our culture is those extroverts are the ones who are chatting and they're talking, but nobody else is talking. So I wanna have a culture where all voices are heard, everybody is able to equally contribute. So think about how do I bring out those other people? Maybe you assign rotating team leader meetings. You're not always leading meetings, maybe it's people on your team to hear all the voices. Sometimes we have to just call on people. And, and ask the specific quiet people, how do they feel about certain things? And sometimes it's engaging them more offline. But these are all pieces of culture that the, the, the takeaway here is to be really intentional about it instead of just assuming that we must be the same now that we're home or working virtually as we were before in the office. The next one, number three, the who, why, who, what, and why. 
clarity on goals. Why do we exist? What's exciting about our work? How do we make a difference in the world? And who's doing what? So goal clarity, role clarity. Um, a lot of teams have redefined this since they've been at home. It is not the same as it used to be. Their priorities have changed with being at home, with the demands on the world. So don't assume that people know this. Really um, understand that, well, you it's super critical that you care about people and you connect with people in the end you have a job to do you have a business to run and so making sure that people understand exactly what they're doing and why is really critical i'm on number four now trust and kindness so i hope that this is uh, self-explanatory the way it reads i for me this is the old do unto others as you would have done to you i think is really critical and also having more compassion and empathy. I think even if you can't relate to somebody else being home with their kids because you don't have kids at home, you can probably relate to some other part of their experience. So maybe for you, it's you live in an apartment and your upstairs neighbor is always making noise and that's what's hard for you. Or maybe it's your dog is barking with all the Amazon packages coming to your door. Find it within you to understand what's hard for you to relate to what's hard for other people. And this is always so critical, obviously, to build high trust with your team and to be kind, caring, compassionate, empathetic. But now more than ever is um, we all need to really rely on that and connect with each other. I am on number five, communication. Um, I can give another two hour webinar on communication and I won't do that. But um, a few things that I will point out in communication that are critical here. Um, open, honest, transparent. If you don't know answers, you may not know when you'll be back at the office, when the office is gonna be open. Will the office be safe? Be honest and talk from the heart about your experiences, but also lean on what you do know. The other part is um, think about a variety of methods. I know that uh, a lot of us are on Zoom overload. If you look up Zoom exhaustion or Zoom fatigue, it's a thing. I use Zoom generically because a lot of us are using Zoom these days, but um, it's, really, it's really an issue that we are getting overloaded with video. So I, I'm a big fan of video. I love having the face-to-face. -face. I wish I could see all of your faces right now. It's hard that I can't. But I would say also mix it up. So I love doing walking one-on-ones, getting in my AirPods and going for a walk and encouraging my directs to go for a walk. If you don't need slides and you don't need to take notes in front of you. Um, and really think about more airtime for listening. And I just slow down as I said that, but there's a slowing down in communication. And really thinking about listening and what's beneath the surface and what do people really care about and what's meaningful for them. And then, of course, not just with your team, but thinking about and really maybe even drawing yourself as a in the middle of a circle. Who are the people around you to communicate with? Keeping up your networks cross-functionally, if that's what's expected in your organization. Strong communication with your boss and with your peers and with your customers. So over-communicating now more than ever. I'm now on the right side of the screen. Leading change is um, really, uh, not every job requires you to lead change, but many if not most jobs do these days and so really thinking about who is resistant and why are they resisting and how can you connect with them and how can you make sure that um, people really understand your vision and it all comes back to communication additional communication on being able to for people to understand your vision and what's important planning and aligning if you this is an important time to be super organized and super clear helping your team prioritize figuring out the roadmap what are things going to happen tracking progress how do we know that we're successful a lot of people are feeling like i can't see people i'm not sure what the milestones are to know if we're successful and by the way if my, with my coaching clients many people are really struggle with this and so if you have a team of people and somebody else on your team is great at this, go for it. You might, you might need help from others. So don't go this one alone if it's something that you're not great at. But um, the other thing I would recommend as a tip on here is put a planning block on your calendar. Use your calendar to your benefit. And I should have mentioned this on self-care as well to schedule in working out, scheduling in the breaks, scheduling taking lunch breaks. I know more companies are being better about saying, 
don't schedule any meetings during lunch, but a lot of you are working on either teams around the globe or even around the US where lunch is a different time of day for different people. So maybe you need to block out two to three because that becomes your lunch, but block out times for, for planning, for looking out to the week, for prioritizing, for taking care of yourself, for meeting with your team. I'm now at number eight, decision making. Um, this, for some of people, are, a lot of people are feeling a little bit paralyzed about making decisions. There's just so many things to do and so many things to decide on. And if I'm trying to help my third grader with his homework, I really can't also decide what's going on for my job right now. It's really so much going on in your brain. And so um, I think that the tool I like here is two simple columns, what I know and what I need to know. So in making a decision, now here's what I know and here's what I need to find out. Because often we get overwhelmed by what we need to find out, but by grounding yourself in what you know, that's a way to feel more focused, feel more energized. And then what do I need to find out? Sometimes it's quick stuff you can grab to make that decision. And sometimes you realize, I'm just gonna have to deal with the fact that I don't know those things. I'm, I'm gonna accept that and embrace it and move on and make the decision. Number seven, accountability. That is really critical. Accountability is what so many people really struggle with. If I can't see what my team is doing, if I can't see them at their computer, if I can't see them working, how do I know that they're actually getting things done? And a lot of us, myself included, are holding ourselves accountable is tricky too. I'm feeling less motivated. I'm feeling more distracted. I'm feeling like while I'm helping my kids with homework, I'm not as accountable for my own work. And while I'm worried about the world and while my CNN feed is bombarding me with bad news after bad news after bad news. So um, think about how to be really clear. This, this all comes back to trust. That's a critical piece of really trusting your team if you don't dig in and understand what's at the root of lack of trust. And um, this is an important thing where you need to nip it in the bud, be direct with your team. If they're not accountable, ask them questions. What's hard about this time right now? What's getting in your way for delivering? So ask questions to get curious and coach them to improve their performance and be more accountable before you move to a place of judging and assuming and getting angry and getting frustrated. And I'll talk about number six, inclusivity. That certainly is not uh, last but not least, it's super critical. This is about valuing individual differences, making sure that all voices are heard. And I, I, I can't emphasize that enough. You're gonna have people on calls who are either not speaking up because they are really um, distracted or disengaged. You're also gonna have people who just don't like this mode. So. If you have a chat feature, for example, some people love chat. They just feel more comfortable communicating that way. Um, some people want to talk offline more. So making sure that you're really hearing all of those differences. And um, also, I know it sounds a little strange because a lot of companies are coming back, but a lot of companies are actually um, hiring right now. So in your hiring decisions, think about in, uh, increasing the diversity of your teams now is certainly a very critical time to be doing that. Okay, so um, there you have it. We have the, the 10 main areas in a very quick review of what it takes to be a great manager of virtual teams. So I'm going to let all of you read through the the key summary here, and I did provide this as a takeaway, um, because I think that, as we said at the start, there's lots of things that are going to be the same in the way you manage teams, the way you care and connect, and there's gonna be things that are gonna be different. So here's a summary of what are the things that are going to be different. One of the things I'll point out on here that I didn't talk about yet is protecting your calendar even more than usual. And I call it the three Ds. Dump it, delegate it, or do it differently. You may not be able to work the same way as you did before. You may need to be a lot more vigilant about the things that you say no to, about the things that you delegate, about the things that you just say, you know what, this is not a top priority. We can't do this. And um, on the less of um, make your conversations as powerful and impactful as you possibly can. Instead of asking somebody, hey, how are you doing? Ask them something more, a little bit more deep and direct, like what's hard right now for you? What's going really great for you right now? So make sure that the time that you connect with people, you're really getting to some depth and you're not keeping it at a high level. 
and and this is the constant keeping in touch with people and even if it's a 10 minute check in I, I do have hear a lot of people saying meetings are constant I, I don't have any more time I can't keep doing these 30 minute one on ones do 10 minutes or send someone a, an, a, an instant message or a text a little bit goes a long way when people know that you care about them Okay, so I'd love to hear now if we can um, go ahead in the chat again, what were some of your top strengths? So going back to the self-assessment that you were working on and taking notes on while I was talking, just type in some of your top strengths as a virtual team leader. Things that you were nodding your head as I was describing going, oh, that's great, I am good at that. That is something that I'm proud that I do well. So we have trust and kindness, flexibility and approach and letting um, each direct report work in a way that works best for them, inclusivity, um, caring about my team members' well-being, uh, leveraging OKRs to align and ensure accountability, uh, strategic optimist. I like that. A new term, but I like it. <laughs> um, the culture, trust, and kindness, and inclusivity. Great. So my message there is be really intentional. Keep doing what you're great at because it's still needed. There could be a little bit more of it. It could be more intentional, but keep doing the good stuff. Okay. And so I would like to share an overview of a few self-care tips before we go to our conclusion. Um, I mentioned before, this is so near and dear to my heart, so important. These are my favorite self-reflection questions. To It's really important for me that we don't go on autopilot. So whether it's once a day, once a week, once every two weeks, put a recurring calendar on your appointment, on your calendar, sorry, I'll try that again, an appointment on your calendar to just check in with yourself. And if you have friends or colleagues or mentors that you can really trust and connect with, or maybe you're working with an external coach, think about people that you can really not only look at these questions for yourself, but talk about that out loud with somebody else. And these are some great coaching questions to work with your team on. Again, Moving away from the how are you doing, you're going to get a pretty diluted answer, I'm fine, everything's okay. Ask them something more meaningful and more powerful, like the questions that are on this screen. So that's just a sample of some good coaching questions for yourself and for other people. Um, the last thing I want to mention is metrics. So metrics are really important, and um, this is hard stuff to measure. So some of you may have internal tools in your company, some engagement surveys or team effectiveness surveys or upward feedback surveys. I'm sure many of you do not. But it's really important that you can say to yourself, well, am I doing okay with this? How do I know if I am successful at managing a high-performance virtual team? So last opportunity for chat is how will you know if you're successful? What are some of the metrics that you'll use? And I encourage you to go ahead and um, you might want to take some notes here as we read off the responses from people and I'll share some of my own, but think about how you are going to measure success because this is really hard to do, but really critical. So um, again, we'll turn to the chat. How are you going to know if you're successfully managing your high performance virtual team? Our teams are meeting deadlines and are communicating well when they can't. Engagement in the process by all team members. Depends on your team's metrics, but be clear with them, transparent, and share often. Great. Um, innovation and ideas are frequent. Love that. Yeah, are we innovating? Are we growing? Are we feeling like we're thriving, not staying stagnant. Um, uh, sometimes attrition metrics, so you know what? Uh, maybe not so much now, but over time, people will walk, they will leave if they are not feeling happy and engaged on your team. Um, are people growing and developing? Do they have development plans? Are there new things that they're learning? In some ways, we're all growing and developing every day through this new world, but there could be things that are more technical skills that people are working on. And of course, financial performance. And 
my last recommendation on this is feedback. Ask people, how are you doing? How are you feeling? What am I doing as a manager, as this virtual team manager, team leader that you really like? What's really working for you? And then what's one thing I can do differently? So be direct, ask people, be bold, ask your team for feedback. And don't just ask them how are things going, but ask them really specifically, what's one thing I can do differently? What should I start, stop, and continue? So. Uh, to ask your questions in a compelling way so that people really feel motivated to answer. And then, of course, you can ask other people. You can ask your boss. You can ask your peers. I have some coaching clients who are even asking their spouses because their spouses are listening to them on their calls for the first time ever. Their significant others or roommates are privy to what's going on at work, and they're going, you know, I keep hearing you overuse the word um in your meetings. You might want to think about doing that differently. So it could be that the people right in your house are the ones who can start giving you some feedback. But the takeaway here is measuring success, even for yourself, even if your company doesn't collect metrics, even for yourself is really critical. So we have a whole whopping three minutes left, but in those three minutes, I would love to take any questions if there are any questions from the audience. Go for it. Hi, everyone. So if you have any questions for Bonnie, we do have a couple of minutes. So please feel free to submit your questions in the questions pane, and we're happy to read them out. Um, so the first question, Bonnie, is now that we're in a virtual setting, how do we best make sure that we're boosting our team's morale, the best way to recognize when we have that one person on our team that's just going above and beyond, how do we make sure we're boosting morale and making sure those people are recognized well? Yeah, great question. And I should have mentioned employee recognition is more important than ever. So the first thing is don't just recognize what people do, but how they do it. So things like, boy, I see how committed you are. I see how super engaged you are. I see how well you, you've adapted to the work from home environment. Uh, so it's not just seeing, I see that you you submitted that report on time, but really looking at the underlying behaviors and people's strengths. Most of us love to be recognized for our strengths. So finding the verbal opportunities to do it publicly, even if it's in groups. And also, um, if you have an employee recognition program, now is the time to use it for sure. If there's spot rewards or other things you can do. Giving um, visibility, so bosses, your boss's boss may not have a lot of that visibility. They're not seeing you working these days. So making sure maybe it's a, a every other week, um, an, an email to your boss that you copy um, your team and you say, I'm really proud of my team's accomplishments. So finding creative ways to make their work more visible than usual, because right now a lot of it feels pretty invisible. Thank you. So the next question is, as a coordinator, I am not in an official management position, but I am responsible for coordinating multiple teams and deliverables on time. Do you have any tips for individuals who do not have direct reports? Yeah, I think all of these things apply. So, so my advice is take care of yourself first. Um, on an airplane, the whole, the, the, the metaphor of put the oxygen mask on your face because if you can't breathe, you can't really help others. So whether you are on a, um, leading a team do that, whether you are not managing people, it's that self-care that's really important. And to ask yourself, maybe every week, how engaged am I right now? It's Monday morning, I gotta jump into a new week. How engaged am I on a scale of one to 10? And if you're lower than an eight or a nine, then ask yourself again, where am I getting stuck? What's hard right now? It could be I haven't had a new exciting project and you need to be direct and ask your boss, hey, you know that thing that you did last week? I think I wanna do something like that. So honest gut check, and then be bold, be courageous to let your superiors know the things that would get you more excited, more engaged at work. Thank you. So we'll do one more question because we're already at one, but I wanna make sure we get as many as possible. So the last question, how do you best address team disruptors on calls? So team members are messaging back and forth behind the scenes and it's just decreasing engagement. Yeah, that's a great one. My, what I've seen works well for that is sit down and have a conversation about ground rules and don't put them out there as a boss. Say to the group, hey, you know what? Let's do a check-in. We And if you're doing it now, you haven't done it yet, that's fine. We've been do, at this for three months now. How is it going? What are we feeling really good about in our communication and our team meetings and, and have an honest conversation? What's not working? And that's when people will say, well, there's too much multitasking. There's too much chit-chatting on the sides. There's too much of somebody stepping away and and um, doing other things. So have the team say, and it could be, what should we start, stop, continue, plus Delta, what's going really well, what should we change? And the last question is, what are we committed to doing together to be a stronger 
virtual team. Get everybody to comply. And you know what I like to do is even write it out and have them sign a contract. I know that sounds goofy, but there is something about getting it in writing and it feels more official. Or, you know, again, an airplane analogy, when you're in the, um, the exit row and you, you have to actually say, yes, I agree, when it comes to that you're willing and able to open that door, have people do that. So agree on those, how we're gonna engage our ways of working, and this is, comes back to team culture. If the team culture is we disengage, then that's not a very nice team culture. So how do you wanna mold that together, and then how is everybody gonna commit to those behaviors together? Great, thank you so much. I'm so sorry we weren't able to get to everyone's questions, but Bonnie did share her email address with us at the very beginning. Um, so if we didn't get to your question, please feel free to email her directly. Um, Bonnie, I would like to thank you so much for taking the time to share your expertise with the TC community. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, Thank you all for your participation. And again, my LinkedIn is here. I would love to hear from you. And with just a quick note to say we met at the, at the webinar, that way we'll always have that thread in the event that we have some work to do it together in the future. Fantastic. And TC will be planning more digital events in the near future. So please stay tuned for to emails from Teachers College, Alumni Relations, and our social media channels. You will be receiving a link to this video presentation as well as the handouts and a follow-up email. This video will also be available on our website at www.tc.edu slash alumni slash career webinars. We hope you can join us for our next webinar, Origami Butterfly Workshop with Jenny Chan on Wednesday, June 24th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you all so much for joining and we hope you have a wonderful day. Bye everyone, have a great day, take care.